Tonight's starting goal is for Tory Pines, number 32, Bryce Cady. For SEC, number 16, Brian Cooper. The Lacrosse Network, in conjunction with IBNSports.com, presents the Boys Division I San Diego County Lacrosse Championships from Westview High School in the suburbs of San Diego, California. Good evening, everyone. Along with Mad Max Davis, I'm Mark Heller. Thanks for joining us, and this game momentarily underway. Torrey Pines is in their gold and cardinal, while... La Costa Canyon, the Mavericks are in their white, and this game is underway. Max, talk about the importance of winning those faceoffs. I mean, faceoffs, in my opinion, are the most important part of the game. You know, you got to have possession of the ball in order to get the ball on offense and have some scoring opportunities. So, yeah, the, so that plays out. Yeah, and the first time these teams met, the Mavericks dominated in ground balls, 46 to 30, and that always equals time of possession on the offensive end. And of course, it's so important to put the pressure on the defense. Exactly. Exactly. You gotta put pressure on the defense, wear them down to that fourth quarter, you get a couple easier looks. Yep. Number of good scorers on this ball club, including Zane O'Brien with 20 goals, Cameron Ziegler 33, Brendan Gaugan 36, Aaron Loy 26. It's a very well balanced attack for the Mavericks, a well oiled machine. Let's see what they do here on their ball movement here. O'Brien doesn't have anything and he kicks up top. Loy, number four, tries to swing past, loose ball, and the ground ball will be scooped up by Tom Reeks, defenseman and a, one of the team's captains on this ball club. Excuse me, midfielder. Shot on the way is going to go wide. And possession will go to Torrey Pine. So let's see what the Falcons can do on their first attack here in the evening. Let's see how Torrey Pines clears the ball here, clearing another important part of the game. Just having the ball isn't enough. You've got to get it over that midline into the box. They give way to Christopher Carter. Carter across the midfield line. Off to Andrew Perkins, son of the coach. Works his way to the back line. And let's see what the Falcons can do. When these teams met earlier this year, it was the Mavericks escaping with an 8-7 win in triple overtime. Yikes, that's a good game. It sure is. Shot on the way, and the beautiful save is made off the shot attempt by Lucas Gradinger. And so they get their first shot opportunity, but the Mavericks come up big with the save. These teams first and second place in the Palomar League during the regular season. Oh, got one. And it looks like a one-on-one -on -one situation. Shot, and we have our first goal of the game. And it comes by Sean Doyle. And it comes with 9.57 to go here in quarter one. Nice ride there by Torrey Pines. Big ground ball. It's a great way to start the game. And for Sean Doyle, that is his 46th goal of the year and his 78th point. one nothing. the Falcons lead. Number four, Doyle there heading to Cornell looking for, got a couple of bright years in front of him. Literally. Literally. He's going to exactly. be an Ivy League man. <laughs> in upstate New York, and we should mention that there are definitely a lot of coaching connections uh, from both teams, which we'll talk about throughout the broadcast. Of course, uh, lacrosse so big back in the east, and a lot of coaches coming out west to run a, a lot of the new programs out here, and it's amazing how quickly high school lacrosse is exploding. It is now the quickest growing sport in the state of California. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you really see explosions of the sport happening all over the country, but especially here on the West Coast. you got such a great crop of athletes. We're starting to steal them from more prominent sports like football out here, and they're starting to pick up a stick, and, and we're seeing a couple great recruits going to some great schools. Loy kicks up top as they move it around to Brendan Galgan. He is dangerous. 36 goals, 61 points on the year. Good defense, though, by Trenton Cady of Torrey Bynes. Ben Keen behind the goal, looking to operate one-on-one -on -one against William Mort. That's a good matchup there. Loy shot on the way, and a beautiful save made by Bryson Cady. That's his 53rd save on the year, and he has saved 45% of the shots that have gone against him this year. When it comes to goalie, Max, what would you say, uh, what is like the bar for outstanding save percentage? 
I would say as a goalie, if you can get anywhere, anything over a 50, between 50 and 60 percent save percentage, you're doing great for your team. You're going to get them a lot of extra possessions, and you're going to also help shift the momentum in your favor. Also, that goal just got waved off. And so big break right there for Tory Pines. Offsides. Not sure about that call. Looked like they had four guys back. And so LaCosta Canyon, the Mavericks, let's see if they can score off a miscue by Tory Pines, just as Tory Pines minutes ago scored off a miscue by LaCosta Canyon. During the regular season, LaCosta Canyon 21-1 and on the year, 11-0, and first place in the Palomar League. Torrey Pines not too shabby, 17-4, and 8-2 and in league play, good for second place. The top two teams from this league who are ranked 1-2 and two in San Diego County meeting here on Championship Saturday. Looks like they're they're uh, forcing LCC to their weak hand all over the field here. Galgan behind the net, 36 goals, 25 assists. Just waiting to set up here. You got a hung situation behind the goal. Some teams will uh, bring their goalie out to one side and try to flush him out. Let's see what they do here. Galgan shoots. Nice save made. So, so far, a couple of big-time saves by Bryson Katie in this match. Mavericks keep it. Let's see what they can do here. Shot on the way, score! For La Costa Canyon, it is Ben Keen with his 21st goal of the year, and it comes at the 740 mark of quarter one. We're all tied at one. Great energy coming off of the LCC sideline here. Reminded me of the uh, Maryland Terps today in the NCAA semifinals. Getting a little mosh pit going. <laughs> And we should mention, ladies and gentlemen, that this gentleman knows exactly what he's talking about. Former lacrosse star over at UMBC. That stands for Maryland, Baltimore County, for those of you on the West Coast. How was the program during your years at UMBC? I had a great experience at UMBC. Uh, in our four years, we actually had one of the highest winning percentages in the nation. You know, we uh, made the tournament three or four years, won the America East twice. So uh, I'd like to think that, you know, me or my classmates and I had a, had a pretty big impact on, on uh, where our program is today. Well, Torrey Pines, as you can hear by the crowd, came up with that loose, excuse me, uh, La Costa Canyon came away with it, and it's Ben Keen, number 15, who just scored moments ago. These two teams, I mean, there are no secrets. As a matter of fact, the head coaches of these two programs, uh, John Ozisi, and Jesse Foss, they work together in the same office, but they don't tell each other anything. <laughs> wow, you don't hear that too often. Two coaches going at each other, having to see each other every day in the office. And as a matter of fact, the two coaches in the Division Two game, they work together as well. Jeez. So it, it's all in the family, but there are still secrets apart. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> May have the makings for another reality show, like hey, we don't yeah. have enough of those. It's a big ground ball there. We've got a fast break. Yep, coming away, it's Hunter Christensen. He passes and gives way to Sean Harvey. Harvey, he gets stripped, and it's picked up by the Falcons. Good job on defense. And here they come. It's Kobe Emery, number 10. Shot on the way. Oh, he hit gets there. hit hard. And excuse me, that was number 40, Owen Wesselock. And Wesselock, by the way, outstanding Fogo. Won 219 faceoffs this year. That's a pretty high percentage right there. Also, 72 ground balls, won 67% of his faceoffs. And what's the number there for outstanding percentage? I would say six, any, anything above 60% is going to do great things for your team. So he falls into that category. Here comes Aaron Loy, number four. They swing right side into that attacking zone offense. We've got substitutions into the game. Talk about the key. When do you decide to make the substitutions in the match without losing your flow offensively or defensively? Well, in this situation, uh, Torrey Pines was fortunate that the ball went on the sideline, so they uh, had a horn, and they can get all their, their uh, clearing personnel on the field. But uh, usually if the ball goes down the end line, you get a quick whistle. If, so as soon as the ball is picked up, you know, it can be played. Carter, he gets stripped of the ball nicely. Who's going to scoop up that ground ball? 
It is finally going to be picked up by the Falcons, William Mort. Delay game, going the other way. Or failure to advance, sorry. So I'll tell you what, that's the key to good defense, isn't it? Let's see if the Mavericks can turn it into a goal. I mean, these teams know each other so well. You, you know, tell. I mean, how do you really put a new wrinkle in when there are no secrets? It's <laughs> tough. I mean, when you know your opponent so well, it just comes down to execution. You know, just running through your, your plays that much harder and uh, really focusing on your passes and your shots. You know, you're not going to surprise a team that you've seen in the regular season a few times. So, as I said, it just comes down to execution and getting the job done. So here come the Mavericks. It's Dylan Flood, number eight. Passes behind the goal. Good ball movement. Ben Keen. Nice shot right on there. the way. And the save is made. Oh, boy. There have been three great saves, Omar, made by Bryson Katie. And I'll tell you, what, when, when the guy behind the cage can come up with those kinds of saves, really lifts the team's spirits, doesn't it? That's exactly it? right. One, two. Got a guy back. Oh. There comes Mort. Another failure to advance call. It seemed like a quick whistle there. So that's happened the last couple of times for the Falcons. So what is it that the Mavericks have done defensively to be able to cause that? Well, their attackmen are doing a good job of shifting side, uh, shifting across the field side to side and, and kind of giving the defensemen, clearing the ball, a couple things to think about. You know, they, they've got to look at the midline for their midfielders, but they don't have all that much time because they've got these quick attackmen bearing down in their hands. So we've got... Approach the four minute mark here in quarter number one. We are tied at one between Torrey and La Costa Canyon. Teams that have met so many times. Just going back to 2005, these teams have met 18 times. La Costa Canyon has won 14 of the 18, but two of the four wins for Torrey Pines, though, have come in the CIF playoffs. Yeah, and the playoffs are one when you really want to get those wins. So just telling us the Torrey Pines bringing their A game when it matters. Yep. Bad pass there. Katie picks it up. Let's see if the Falcons can get some kind of offense mustered here. One all your score. Have to say the Mavericks have probably had a lot more offensive pushes than the Falcons have. Let's see if Torrey can make this one count. Yeah, definitely into possession here. See if they hold on to the ball for a while, give their defense a rest. Yeah, because that defense so far in the first quarter has been working hard. It's Corey Black, nine, swings right side of Zach Zian. Zian wears number five. Thanks for joining us coast to coast, wherever you may be. It's the boys, Division I lacrosse championships for San Diego County here on the Lacrosse Network in conjunction with IBNSports.com, along with Max Davis, I'm Mark Keller, and a cast of many. Thanks so much for joining us here at Westview High. I like the fact that they're being patient, though. Look for that good shot. Bit stagnant on offense. Look, Torrey Punch looked to begin a little more uh, flow in their offense. A crease violation. You called it there, Max. You said it about two seconds before the PA announcer did. Good job, buddy. <laughs> so the Mavericks this year, 21 and one. A year ago, this team was 18 and four, and their season. Guess who they lost to in the semis to Torrey Pines by the count of 11 to five. Surprise, so surprise. you know that they have retribution on their mind here tonight. Tom Reese, he wears number seven, gives way off to Hester, number 18. Also talk about, you know, some of the players, especially on defense, have those longer sticks than the guys at, at attack and midi. Yeah, defensemen are, they, they're getting a bit, of a, a bit of an advantage with a six-foot pole to guard those attackmen down low. Really spell, it really gives an advantage uh, around the crease area. Turn over here. Yep. And let's see what the Falcons can do with it. And William Mort, Mort number three. Defending him is Cameron Ziegler. We haven't really mentioned Ziegler so much, but he is one of their outstanding scorers. And he actually had four goals, including three goals in a 61-second span in their 13-3 semifinal win against Westview. That's good showing. We have a timeout. 
with 1.17 to go here in the quarter, and we are tied at one. Max, so far, what stands out in your mind here in the first quarter of play? Um, I think the biggest factor so far in this game is LaCosta's time of possession on offense. You know, they've, they've had the ball. Or, I mean, every time the tour has gone on offense, they seem to have uh, turned it over and given it right back to that LCCO. So um, let's see late in, the, in the later quarters how the Torrey Pines defense uh, responds to all the, all the time with the ball at their end. Okay. Uh, we're mentioning the New York ties that take place in this game today. LaCosta Canyon head coach Jesse Foss, second year as head coach, ninth year with the program. Uh, he uh, started his playing career at Levittown Division High School. And then after a short stint at Nassau Community, he played over at Stony Brook. So is that the same conference as you at UMBC? Yes, sir. Stony Brook, a member of the America East Conference, along with um, Albany, Hartford, Binghamton and UMBC, so um, another up-and-coming conference in the Division One. And then, meanwhile, you take a look at the staff of Torrey Pines, led by John Zisi, his assistants Nick Gradinger, Rory Doucette, and Greg Kirk. Now, Rory Doucette, we got a lot to talk about. Rory is from uh, Merrick, Long Island, the same town that yours truly grew up in. Uh, he went to Calhoun High. And he grew up on Elliott Place. And uh, Rory told me, say hello to his da uh, dad, John, who is watching this game live. He said, Mark, you're going to make my dad's day. So <laughs> there you go, Mr. Doucette. And so what do you think they spoke about during that timeout, and what do you look for from the Falcons here offensively? We were looking for a high percentage shot here for Torrey Pines. They had a chance to talk with their coach about what they want to accomplish in this possession. Let's see if they can come out and execute under almost under a minute here in the quarter. Yep, it's Andrew Perkins, number two, gives way to Bennett Schaefer. Schaefer doesn't have anything behind the net. Looking to move that ball. I think they probably sp spoke be a little more crisp on the attack. The shot on the way is wide. It's a good 10-yard shot there. Let's see if they can get another one. And that shot by Zach Zian, number five, 19 goals, eight assists for 27 points on the year. Great injury. Lucas up top. Let's see what they can do as they go to Perkins. Perkins over to Schaefer. Schaefer behind the net. Ooh. Loose ball. Ooh, also a hard yes, hit. That was a high one. Got a player down in the field here. Yep, and we'll wait for the official call down on the ground. Talk about getting your clock clean. That's what happened to Sean Doyle. And Doyle, he, he's very dangerous, as Mickey used to say from the Rocky movies. 46 goals, 32 assists, good for 78 points. Scored the opening goal in this game. Very crafty around the crease. we got an um, extra man opportunity here for Torrey Pines. It'd be huge for momentum if they can get one going into the second period. We've got 37.8 seconds to go. And let's see if the Falcons have an opportunity to take the lead at the end of one. So here come the Falcons. Let's see what they can do. Coming out in a 1-4-1 set here. Look for somebody rolling off the crease. Down to 18 seconds behind the net. There I'm sure is. pretty Action. soon they'll probably yell out the tie. Good defense by the Mavericks. We're down to eight seconds. They better make sure they try and get a shot off here. Let's see what Zian will do. Here. Yep, Keep I think they will. And we have reached the end of one from Westview High in what has been a defensive battle and lived up to billing here in the boys' Division I San Diego County Lacrosse Championships. It's La Costa Canyon 1. And Torrey Pines won. You're watching exclusive action of the Lacrosse Championships on the Lacrosse Network in conjunction with IBN Sports.com.
Moss finds Costanzo. Costanzo's coming around, takes a shot in the goal! And that's gonna do it, Costanzo does it himself. Comes around the corner, shoots top shelf, off stick. And Cal State Fullerton is going to the championship game. Thanks for joining us here. Second quarter action coming underway here on the Lacrosse Network in conjunction with IBNSports.com. Mark Heller, Mad Max Davis, and the familiar voice on the Lacrosse Network, Mr. Chris Marshall. We open up in the second quarter. Torrey Pine still in a man up power play situation. So for some of the same motion here in that 1 4 rolling off. Let's see what Torrey can do right here. Zach Zian, they work it behind the net to Sean Doyle. Doyle. Trying to get a shot, but I'll tell you, that Maverick defense right now, Chris Marshall, awfully tight. Yeah, definitely uh, definitely look for them to try and hit Perkins up top. I mean, he's got a real rip, and we saw them, especially in the last time these guys uh, these guys met. Uh, Zion went down with an injury, and it really uh, threw a wrench into their whole offense. But uh, look, for, look for Perkins to take some shots from up top. Shot on the way, nice save made. So the Mavericks defense able to stand tall. However, like an in and out call there. Goalie uh, had possession of the ball and then left the crease and then came back in, which is uh, going to change possession back over to Torrey Pines. And when you say in and out, we're not talking about the hamburger, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Gradinger kicks up top to Perkins. Perkins back to Gradinger. Whip shoot scores! 10.59 to go here in the first half. It's 2 1 Falcons. Yeah, and that's uh, Lucas Gradinger's team captain. He's uh, he's committed to Maryland. Uh, also, also came away with the victory today, so I'm sure he's happy to see that. 16-10, the Terps over Duke today. For all you guys who didn't get to see the game. And for Gradinger, that is goal number 34 on the year and point number 55. So we spoke about the importance of winning those face-offs and scoring in power play situations. And Torrey Pines able to do that right there and re-garner the lead, their second lead of the afternoon. Lucky not to get a uh, not to get a flag there. Well, they got a flag right there, Chris. I mean, you can you can you can feel the tension. I mean, there's no love lost between these two teams. I mean, they played twice already this season, uh, with a combined score of, of three goals separating the two the two games. Uh, I think a triple overtime victory for LCC earlier in the season, uh, really, really pouring some salt on the uh, on the Torrey Pines game. Yeah, that was uh, back on May the first, as they were able to hold off the Falcons eight to seven. So going to the triple OT, and of course in the same league and finishing in first and second place and crosstown rivals and all that, and uh, so far it has lived up to billing as far as the aggressiveness has been concerned, and no doubt defense so far has dominated this one. Certainly has. Looks like we're going to be 5-on-5 five five here for a short stint until the LCC penalty is released. And here come the Mavericks with Tom Reese. Loose ball scramble. And no shot attempt there, so the Falcon defense able to come up big, and let's see what they can do here in transition. Owners of a 2-1 to one lead, 10-23 to go here in the first half. The boys' Division I San Diego County Lacrosse Championships between Torrey Pines and La Costa Canyon. Torrey Pines in their cardinal and gold, La Costa Canyon in their white. And that's, and that's a real heads up uh, heads up call there from the, from the Torrey sideline. They've got they've got one of their D middies bringing the ball, getting it getting it up into the box. I mean, definitely not someone that they want to have the ball uh, in their hands under that kind of pressure. That's probably like the equivalent in basketball of having Shaquille O'Neal bring the ball up court. That's not who you want handling the rock. 
I, I'd say that's a fair assessment, Mark. Hey, Max, um, talk about uh, some professional lacrosse that is going to be uh, coming up next week. What's going on? Yeah, next weekend um, at Orange Coast College is the LXM Pro Tour. I believe it's the uh, third year that we've been in, in OCC, and uh, it should be a great event. I'm really excited to get back out in the field and uh, move the legs a little bit. It's been a while. I'll tell you, Lombard Stadium is a fantastic location for that game to be played. If you've never been there, it's definitely one of the more attractive venues in Orange County, uh, worth making the trip wherever you are in Southern California. Definitely a great venue. Um, I really enjoyed playing there last year. You know, the, it's very intimate. You know, behind the sidelines, you got all the kids hanging over the banisters and making a lot of noise. So it's definitely a great atmosphere to play in. So let's see. Let's figure out where everyone traveled from today. I came from Rancho Santa Margarita in Orange County. Max, where did you travel from today? came from Mission Viejo in, uh, in uh, Orange County. Oh, you're right next to me. We're next to our neighbors. Okay. Uh, we should have carpooled. I didn't know about that. And, uh, Chris, where did you travel from today? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm down here from uh, Santa Monica. Okay. Oh, from the L.A. area. Okay. Yep. Got the miles going on. And Samir, our outstanding producer, he was smart enough to come down here last night. Has an uncle just a mile away. He gets the home cooking, even on the road. So let's see what Tory Pines does coming out of this timeout. It's like some pressure on the ball from LCC. Let's see if they can dislodge it out of the stick. They were trying to do that against Zach Zion. I mean that's great pressure defense. I mean if you can, if you can get uh, a failure to advance out of a timeout, you're doing something you're doing something right. Well, both defenses have definitely been dominating this game. Both offenses have really had a trouble finding scoring opportunities. Yeah, having a little trouble here clearing the ball. Luckily, they got it over and in the box in time. And that's something you can expect to see from Brian Cooper. I mean, he's he's a real real solid player. Uh, in the cage, I mean, real, real, real disciplined with his clears, and uh, if he if he gets hot, it's going to be tough to get any by him. 149 saves, 67 percentage of save. I mean, that's pretty high there. So a veteran behind the pipes, you want him there, of course, in a big game like this. And I know he he basically single-handedly kept them in the game uh, in their first matchup of the season. And here comes Torrey Pines in transition. Let's see what the Falcons can do, led by Kobe Emery. Ooh, good hitch. Shot on the way, score! It's a great goal. Sean Doyle with his second of the game. It comes at the 8.58 mark of quarter number two, and Torrey goes up 3-1. to one. That's that good old-fashioned Samir Chaudhry hitch that, uh, that we like to talk about. I mean, it gets the head fake, keeps, keeps moving upfield, gets a little bit better angle on it, and then just rips top cheese. Man, talk about transition play and taking advantage of the turnover. That was Sean Doyle right there. They'll probably have to say for that setup, take me out for an in-and-out burger. <laughs> <laughs> Another big face-off win there. Let's see if Torrey Price can cash in on this possession. Yep, because if they could go up by three goals, that would be a huge lead in the game that has been dominated by the defense so far. Perkins. Yeah, and also be sure if you're watching to uh, let us know what you think. Uh, send your comments down at the bottom of the feed. Uh, they, they will be seen, um, and we, we'd love to hear what you think about the broadcast. The more the merrier. Tyler Yamamoto. Good look in the crease. Oh, good opportunity, but high and wide, and I am certainly sure that Corey Black would like to get that one back, huh, Chris Marshall? Yeah, I mean, that's that's just great positioning uh, coming from Cooper. I mean, he's it, it looked like he might have got a piece of it, too, but he's, he's staying, staying big in his cage and making uh, making a miss there, and that's, that, that's a real big play. That's all on the goalie. Now the challenge for the Mavericks is to get their offensive game going. Christensen off to Galgan. Brendan, we mentioned 36 goals on the year entering tonight, but has not scored yet. The lone goal by the Mavericks came by Keene at the 747 mark of quarter one. O'Brien. Back to Christensen. Look to pass in the crease. They will keep possession. And it comes with 7.24 to go here in the second quarter. Substitution for Torrey Pines, number 10. Colby Emery into the game. He will replace Bennett Schaefer. 
And also into the contest for the Mavericks is Aaron Loy, and he will replace Jared Mafucci. Keen behind the cage. Doesn't have it. We'll get into their half-court set with Christensen. Hester looks like it likes his matchup here. Let's see if he can get a nice vertical dodge and get the offense jump started. They certainly can use that. Loy doesn't have it. Loose ball, who's going to scoop up that grounder. Coming away with it to the Falcons. Boy, they have dominated and done well in that area today. It's Trenton Katie. That was the battle that they lost last time they played. They lost in the ground balls 46-30. But so far in this first half, they have dominated in that category. And, uh, you know, it's fair to mention Trent and Katie uh, going to play uh, ball at uh, CU Boulder next year. So the MCLA definitely getting some love out of this uh, San Diego area as well. And if you haven't checked out the uh, club ball series uh, on our channel, it's definitely worth your time. It's all about the CU Boulder uh, lacrosse team. And there's a new one uh, today. So be on the lookout for that. Episode 6. Here's the turnover. Here come the Mavericks. And thanks for that update, Chris. Cole Tudor. It's a good timeout call by the LCC coaching staff. It comes with 5.50 to go here in the first half. It's Torrey Pines 3 and La Costa Canyon 1. You're watching exclusive action of the boys Division 1 lacrosse championships for San Diego County on the lacrosse network in conjunction with IBNSports.com. So 3-1 the score so far. And the question, Max, that I pose to you is, what do the Mavericks need to do to get their offense unleashed during the course of the year? They average 10 goals a game and surrendering just 4.5, but so far just one goal here in the first half. Yeah, it looks now that the offense is having a, touch, a tough time uh, settling into the, into the flow of the game. I would suggest coming out of this timeout that they you know, go, to, go to a bread and butter play, one that they've been running all year and that the kids could pretty much get through with their eyes closed. So 5.50 to go. Uh, recap the scoring for Torrey Pines. Doyle got the Falcons on the scoreboard at the 9.37 mark to make it one nothing. Then about two minutes later, Ben Keene scored his 21st, and we finished the quarter tied at 1. But in the second quarter, Gradinger at 10.57 made it 2-1, and then Doyle his 47th goal of the year and second of the game at the 8.58 mark, and 3-1 is where we stand. Mr. Chris Marshall, the outstanding expert here in the sport of lacrosse, from what you've seen in this game so far, uh, what has stood out in your mind? Well, I mean, ju just the fact that uh, Torrey's been able to hold uh, LCC to one goal uh, is, really, is really a game changer for them. I, I know that... Uh they're getting they're getting their shots to fall. They have three goals. I know in the earlier matchups they they outshot uh, outshot LCC nearly nearly two to one at least in their first matchup. And the fact that they're getting those on cage is huge for them. I mean, especially for their confidence. And just like any sport, it's all about confidence. And right now, it's the Falcons with the confidence. The Mavericks are going to see if coming out of this timeout, if they could score and get within one, 5.50 to go here in the first half at Westview High School, just in the outskirts of San Diego. So good aggressive defense continues by the Falcons. Ben Keen. With it for the Mavericks. Now to Ziegler. Ziegler had that huge semifinal performance with four goals, including three goals in 61 seconds. The attempted pass to Aaron Loy goes wide, and the Falcons are going to come away with yet another ground ball. Or will they? Yes, they do. And coming away with it is number 27, Connor Lansdale. His 22nd ground ball of the year. And that's a fantastic ride. I mean, you, you, look, you look at the senior, Mort, bringing the ball up for Torrey Pines. And, I mean, he's, he's going to play at Penn. And, and if, you, if you're able to take the ball away from him on the sideline, use the sideline as an extra defender, uh, that's, that's a fantastic fundamental play. You know, when you start also taking a look at the national rankings, gentlemen, you're starting to see the teams from out here starting to crack those national rankings, which five years ago you wouldn't have thought that. Well, I mean... 
We, we thought they were good enough. It's it, it's just a matter of uh, <laughs> guys on the East Coast coming, are, to, coming are, to see what we're working with over here on the West are, Side. Are you trying to say that there was a New York bias? <laughs> I, I've never heard anyone say I, that. I've but, never uh, heard that before. Oh, yeah, ESPN. Oh, yeah, but no, I forgot there's no East Coast bias whatsoever. <laughs> oh, some hard hitting there, and the ball scooped up, and the Mavericks and Aaron Loyal see if they can get something going as we approach the four-and-a-half-minute mark here in the first half. And I know we saw a really great game between uh, Torrey Pines and St. Ignatius earlier this season. And St. Ignatius was the only uh, California team to break the ESPN rise uh, top 50 to start the season. So, uh, I mean, there's there's definitely teams out here that can that can play. Yep, so as they say, you come a long way, baby. Torrey Pines came away with a victory on that one. <laughs> Shot on the way, and the save is made. Shot attempt by Brandon Galgan. And a nice save by Torrey Pines, Bryson Katie. And here come the Falcons. Let's see what they can do. Corey Black. Behind to Lucas Gradinger. Gradinger off to Doyle. I would definitely try and keep it out of the hands of Doyle. He's been outstanding so far with a pair of goals. Gradinger behind the net. Doesn't have it. Gives back to Doyle. We approach three and a half minutes to go here in the first half with Torrey Pines leading it by the count of three to one. And there, by the way, the guests on your scoreboard here tonight. Shot on the way by Perkins goes wide. And the Falcons should keep possession. Torrey Pines doing a good job of playing the substitution game at the midline. Uh, set and pick for the ball and then being their man in the midline could create some matchup problems keeping the LCC offensive midfielders on the field. Zion. And they swing it right side. Let's see what they can do right here. Just had shot opportunity a moment ago that went wide. Schaefer. Off to Doyle. Design. Let's see what Zach can do here. Nothing doing. Passes it. Good ball movement. Gradinger. Off to Doyle. Doyle to Zion. Being patient. Definitely want to make that defense work if you can. Doyle to Gradinger. Behind the net looking for a cutter. Zion. Thought about it for a second. Good defense, though, by the Mavericks. I mean, that's solid fundamental defense. He's moving his feet, uh, riding his hip. I mean, you can't ask for much more out of, your, uh, out of your defenders. Yep, and they're doing that right there. Perkins. Doyle. Zion. Yikes. Thought about the shot. Looked like he tried to throw it off his teammate, Corey Black. And the ball now scooped up by LaCosta Canyon's Aiden Moran. Looks like that one slipped out of the stick a bit. Unfortunate there for uh, number nine in the crease. Looks like he's coming off for a bit of an injury. Yeah, cause, and when that ball, by the way, when you see those shot attempts, it may look slow to you from a distance, but sometimes those balls could be traveling up to 100 miles an hour and then some. Absolutely. Yeah, and getting hit with a lacrosse ball is easily the worst thing in the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to say it's not the best thing? <laughs> Let's see what the Mavericks can do here. O'Brien. Right side to Reese. Reese, number seven. Sets up his teammate. Shot score! Ben Keane with his second goal of the night. It comes with 1.32 to go here in the first half. And we've got ourselves a one-goal game. It's 3-2. And that's a, that's a huge momentum goal for LCC. Uh, able to get on the board with not much time to go uh, here in the first half. Uh, really kind of takes some of that momentum back from Torrey. And it was all about the good ball movement. And Keane came across the crease. He was open, and he knew what to do with it. So we got our uh, first question here from uh, JRBKXY, uh, wanting to know what place uh, Tory finished in the league. They finished in second place in the Pal Omar League. They were two games behind league champion La Costa Canyon. So That's thanks for that ball. question. And that's a really heads-up timeout call. I, I mean, you get, you, you, get the, you get the boys in. He finally picks up that ground ball right on the sideline just in time. And with uh, 75 seconds to go in the half, I mean, this will be a great opportunity for them to tie this game up and, and really take some momentum from, uh, from Torrey. And when you consider the way this first half has gone and the fact, uh, Max, that Torrey has really dominated the offensive end, 
if the Mavericks can go into the locker room tied, you talk about a momentum changer, that would certainly be it. Yeah, that's, I mean, definitely changed the whole complexion of the game. You know, going down one or being down one as opposed to a tie game just changes the mindset of your entire team. So let's see if uh, LCC holds for the last shot of the half here if they try to get a quick one. Chris Marshall, talk a little bit about your lacrosse background and your love of the game. Uh, well, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm from Sacramento. I actually didn't play lacrosse in high school, uh, and then I, I went to Chapman and uh, picked up picked up the game there. And uh, as, soon, as soon as I uh, borrowed uh, borrowed Hank Rubin's stick to uh, show up to tryouts, it's uh, it's been been a love of mine. I mean, it's such an exciting, uh, fast paced game that. Uh, Really happy I can uh, be a, be a part of it uh, even now. I'm going to tell you what Chapman has a great football facility to play the game of lacrosse in. Yeah, I've seen a couple of uh, your games on ESPN over the years. That's that's the case. I mean, they they have uh, such a media friendly uh, stadium there with the the internet and the way that the stands are set up and everything, and and with the broadcast program they've got there, it's it's really uh, impressive what they've been able to accomplish. Playing yeah, club yeah, level. nice campus there in uh, Orange, California. Also, uh, uh, you don't hear a lot of bad, but they actually have a pretty good basketball program there. Mike Bokoski, the longtime head coach, former assistant at UC Irvine under Bill Mulligan. So go check it out on the Chapman campus, whether it's lacrosse or basketball. So back to action. Mavericks looking to try and tie this thing up. We now hit the one-minute mark to go here in the first half. Flood. Gets stripped of the ball, and they're not going to get that opportunity. Yeah, Flood looks like he's been struggling a bit, uh, beating that short stick uh, matchup he's got. It's going to be a uh, key to the game in the second half, see if he can beat his matchup, because they really need him to uh, initiate that offense. Here comes Doyle. He of the two goals here in the first half. Now Torrey looking to try to double up La Costa Canyon before the end of this first half as we hit the 30-second mark here in the first half of action. Four 12-minute quarters here in boys lacrosse coming up close to halftime. It's been a good one so far. You know, I, you have to think that they're going to try and dodge from X and look and look for either uh, Perkins with the, with the shot up top or Yamamoto there with the, uh, the big rip. Yep, and that one goes wide, and they will keep possession down to 11.3 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Gradinger trying to get something going. Perkins will have to let it fly. He gets stripped of it, and that will wrap up the first half of play. And, and, that's, and that's great defense by uh, by Melzer. I mean, he's a real game changer for, uh, for LCC. As we have reached the half, your score, the Torrey Pine Falcons, the number two seed three, and La Costa Canyon, the number one seed two. So it is close through 24 minutes of play, and we still have another 24 minutes of lacrosse action coming up. You're watching exclusive action of the Division I Boys San Diego County Lacrosse Championships on the Lacrosse Network in conjunction with IBNSports.com. Sir, it's a pleasure to battle in front of you. Wait, I don't... Yo, shut crease, shut crease. Get there, get out on yours. Get out on your switch. Goalie, keep, 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 keep.
I got him. I got him, man. Yellow, force him under, force him under. Under. Stay there, stay there. We're slow to go. Put your stick up field. Put your stick up field. Yo, go. He's going right. Lift. I think mine's on, I think mine's like it. I think so. Great moments. We're born with great opportunity. And that's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. The stick. Right, right back. Right back. Right back. <laughs> I'm already starting to sweat. All right. Oh, I'm just sweating sitting on the bench. Professional sweat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God! First oh. shot of the day. I don't know. My mind is worse. Woo! Coming after that spot. Somebody pull one near side. Yeah. Get that Walters on him. Look for the head, Joe. Yeah, guys, two shots to go. Look for his head. Here it is, Max. Uh, I don't know yet. <clears throat> Good shot. That's moving. Get him, G. Uh huh. It's popcorn.
after that spot. Somebody pull one near side. Yeah. Get that Walters yeah. on him. Look for the head, Joe. Yeah, guys, get a shot to go. Look for his head. Here it is, is Max. Uh, I don't know yet. <clears throat> Good shot. That's moving. Get him, G. Uh huh. It's popcorn. Coach, I'm ready to rock. Oh, oh shit. Oh, Jesus. Don't coach, so don't oh. Thanks for joining us. We're moments away from the start of the second half here on the Lacrosse Network in conjunction with IBNSports.com. Mark Heller, Chris Marshall, and Max Davis, thanks so much for joining us. A close one here. 3-2, Torrey Pines leads it. And second half action is underway. Here we go. Let's see who wants to win that CIF championship. The Mavericks, they claim championships back in 2010 and 2008. But right now, Torrey Pines, they've got the one goal lead. Yeah, and I hope you definitely stayed tuned during halftime because uh, we put up a couple of our new uh, LXM Pro videos and they're, s they're pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not going to lie. We got uh, Max, Max Davis with us here. Uh, with that that air gate dive across the back of the back of the crease, and it's pretty it's pretty spectacular. That is a athletic movements. Yeah, I think I could have got injured just watching that. Yeah, I mean it looks pretty <laughs> cool, but uh, the landing definitely wasn't favorable. Yeah, make sure you stick it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw I saw Max uh, Max Ritz out there diving on the uh, on the high jump pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little guy Ritz is uh he's getting his legs into it a bit. And just a reminder that it'll be live next week at uh, at 4:30 next Saturday. And uh, definitely come out to OCC if you're uh, if you're in the area. Here comes Torrey Pines' first shot attempt. Nice save made off the Andrew Perkins shot. And let's see what the Mavs can do here in transition. Great ride there by Torrey Pines, getting the ball back. Great job by Sean Doyle. He showed he could do more than score goals. Doyle having a great overall game today. Let's see if we can keep it going. Yeah, right now I'd have to say if this match came to an end, he would be the player of the game. Yeah, and, and you need that out of your best players. I mean, if you've, if you've got the best player on your team out there getting the ball back on the ride, then the rest of the players are going to see that and do the same thing. Absolutely. And Torrey, of course, the team to beat a year ago. They were CIF champs. They defeated Poway 10-7 in the championship game. Question is, gentlemen, can they make it two in a row? Well, all I know is it is very difficult to beat a team three times in the same season. That's the old adage. Especially a team as good as Torrey Pines. I mean, they're, there's D1 guys all over the field for them. And of all the players going D1 next year, uh, Chris Marshall, what player do you think can make the biggest impact the quickest out of the whole group? I mean, I, I think Sean Doyle's ready to go now. I mean, he's not he's not one of those players that uses size like some of the some of the D1 attackmen that you see. And I mean, he's just crafty and he and he can shred. I mean, he, he hits the corners uh, all, all game long. So I mean, I, I definitely think he can be a uh, be an impact player. So with it is Zayn O'Brien. Mavericks looking to try to tie this one up at three. Give way to Reese. Swing it right side to Aaron Loy. Loy, number four. They work behind the net. To Reese. Looking to get a shot off. Sets up his teammate. Good pressure defense there. Nothing doing for Keane. He's got both goals for the Mavericks here tonight. That was more all over. Ziegler. Remember, he was the star in the semifinals against Westview. Let's see if he could pull the trick again tonight for the Mavericks. LaCosta Canyon fans would love it if he could. Loy. Shot on the way. Way wide. 
Looks like a loose ball push call there on Torrey Pines. It'll stay with uh, LCC. Yep, let's see what the Mavericks can do. Cameron Ziegler, number six. Ziegler has not scored tonight yet. 33 goals, 26 assists for 59 points on the year. Ziegler to Key. Ben with it. Looking to operate one on one. Gets picked up on the double team. Off to Ziegler. They're definitely staying at home in both uh, Keen and Ziegler, aren't they, Max? Yeah, going to try not to slide from them too much. Shot in the way, score! Tom Reese comes up with the goal at the 839 mark, and we are all tied at three. It's a great spot to shoot there by Tom. The uh, low and away spot is really hard for a goalie to get to, whether it's stick side or off stick. And for Reese, that is goal number nine and his 17th point of the year. And it comes with 839 to go. I know that uh, Christy McDonald will be... Uh... Happy to see that one. Uh, watching the game from Greensboro, North Carolina, with her uh, her grandson in the cage for the Mavericks. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. Now the grandparents always very supportive. Here comes Tory Pines and Kobe Emery. Shot. Deflection. Loose ball picked up. Owen Wesselak. He does so well on those faceoffs. But we haven't really had that many today because only six goals so far here in the contest. Yeah, both teams doing a much better job at the start of this half of uh, keeping possession of the ball and not turning it over so much. Perkins. Will now give way to Zach Zion. They go behind the net. It's just all about the gaps and openings. Let's see if the Falcons can find one. They would certainly like to retake the lead here. Always looking for that equalizer. Zion. Shot. It's going to go wide. But we've also got a flag. And I mean, we, we saw a very similar play the first the first time these, these two teams met where Zion took a took a hit high and uh, and had to leave the game. It looked like he might have been out. So I mean it's it's always scary to see uh, see a player like that take a hit uh, high, especially when he's got a history. So it'll be one minute advantage here for the Falcons. Illegal body check is the call. And so the Falcons, each time the Mavericks have come back to tie, they have reclaimed the lead. Let's see if they can do it again. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit here at Westview High. Shot by Perkins, and the save is made. Good job by Cooper for the Mavericks. Scramble. Picked up by Torrey. Timeout called by the Falcons. It comes with 7-10 to go here in the third. All tied at three. So right now, gentlemen, the threes are wild. Yeah, and that's a really uh, that's a really great play out of Mort there. I mean, he charged through that ground ball and uh, was was able to pick it up when no one else could. And really, uh, really getting some some great leadership from the uh, defense bend from the senior. Yeah, and we've seen so far throughout this game, the Falcons have really dominated in that category, and I think that was a a point of uh, emphasis uh, for uh, head coach uh, ZC because of the fact that. Um, in their last game, they really got dominated in that category, and I think he said, hey, this is something we've got to clean up and take care of. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a lot like rebounds. I mean, they're, they're not always glamorous, but uh, the team who has more usually wins the game. So that a telling stat. Three all with 7-10 to go. You're watching exclusive action of the boys' Division I lacrosse championships for San Diego County on the Lacrosse Network in conjunction with IBN Sports.com. Mark Heller, Max Davis, Chris Marshall, thanks for joining us here at Westview High School. Of course, Samir, our outstanding producer, running the board, making sure everything is going as smoothly here today and thanks so much for joining us just a reminder if you just tuned in Tory Pines and their Cardinal and Gold 
and La Costa Canyon. They are in their white and dark numbers. Three all your score. Seven ten to go. Let's see what Torrey can do on this possession. And uh, Max, what do you look for out of the Falcons here? Yeah, Torrey still got a, uh, a man up here for it's probably the end of their penalty. So let's see if they get into something quickly or if they hold the ball and wait to go six on six. Gradinger, right side, Bennett. They're behind the net and they work it around. Gradinger, Doyle. Shot on the way. I think he had beat the goalie on that one, but Schaefer's shot went wide. It's a great overhand bounce shot. It's, that's the fundamentals right there. They don't, they don't teach that anymore. And he could score 18 goals on the year. Good for 28 points. Shot by Doyle. That'll go wide. I mean, his release is so quick. I mean, he, he, he gets it, the ball's out, and, it, and it's out in a hurry. Uh-oh. Falcons will keep the possession with Sean Doyle. Seems like he's kind of been everywhere today. Yeah, it was a good look inside. Just couldn't execute with the pass there. Gradinger, Lucas. Back to Doyle. To Perkins. You're hearing the coach yell, man out in front, 25. Zion. Behind the net to Gradinger. We hit six minutes to go here in the third. Three all your score between these Palomar League rivals. I think the two schools are what? Separated by what? About three miles apart maybe? If that. Yeah. Just everything's always spread out in San Diego. So, you know, you got to go with it at least three miles. As my friends from San Carlos always say, everything's 20 minutes away. <laughs> I know you can find kids from both those schools over at Rico's Tacos. So, <laughs> favorite spot of ours. Perkins. Area. Let's see what he can do here. Double teamed. Nothing doing. Good defense by the Falcons. They definitely want a shot attempt here, but the Maverick defense is not allowing the Falcons to get one off. Stall warning given here to Torrey Pines. They've got to keep the ball inside of the box. Good pick up there, Max. Greenger. Wheeling, dealing, nothing doing. Great defense by the Mavericks. Should see a tripping call there. I mean, that's 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 a forced shot there. I mean, just because you get the stall warning doesn't mean you need to absolutely go to cage right away. I mean, they, they, they were holding the ball basically in the restraining box that whole possession. Uh, I mean, you'd, you'd like to think that they'd be able to do that a little longer than that. But I think if the call may be going against Zach Zion. Okay, so they called it against Bennett Schaefer. So 30-second power play here for the Mavericks. Five minutes to go here in the third, tied at three. How huge would this be if the Mavericks come up with a goal? Yeah, still looking for uh, one of these teams to make a breakthrough here in the third. Let's see if LCC can uh, take advantage of this man-up opportunity. They're working it around. Off to Reese. Reese scored that last goal to tie it at three. Off to O'Brien. He's capable, but has been held in check so far here today. That's a force right there. Yep, sure is. Got to get a better shot than that with a man up. Torrey Pine's going the other way. Yep. Right. The goalie, Caden, gets the offense going. The turf, turf gremlins are out today. <laughs> they, they sure are. What happened there? I uh, got to watch out for those lines. Boy, it seemed like Katie was moving good and all of a sudden just lost his balance. Doyle picks it up. Boy, Doyle's been everywhere. Here comes Katie with it with the long pole. Trenton Katie, number seven. Dangerous pass, but nice scoop up by Corey Black. A couple of substitutions. Let's see what the Falcons can do here. Doyle to Gradinger. Wind picking up a little bit, but right now not much of a factor. Yeah, I mean it definitely takes some serious, uh, serious gusts to 
change the trajectory of that uh, that solid rubber ball. Yep, shot on the way goes wide by Schaefer. And the Falcons will keep possession. 3.26 to go here in the third. All tied at three. Aaron pass there. I think a little miscommunicado there. Turnover, rare one there, and the Mavericks will take over. That's yeah, unlucky for Torrey Pines. It looked like uh, Schaefer got a little nudge into the crease there by his defenseman. You know, sometimes you get those calls and sometimes you don't. And we know we'd never see that happen at UMBC. Oh, never, never. No, no, no. Here comes Gradinger off the turnover. Oh, I think he might have gotten whacked with the stick there. Kind of came up limber there for a second. Yeah, it looked like he got that one in the shin. Yeah, they, you don't want to get in the shin. Just like you don't want to get hit with the ball. <laughs> right up there. Some lingering effects there. That'll, that'll hurt tomorrow for sure. Yep, here comes Perkins. He shoots, and it goes wide. Good shot opportunity. Good luck there. Perkins mad at himself. He thought he should have put it in between the pipes. And we've got substitutions. Into the game for the Mavericks is Cole Tudor. Into the contest for the Falcons, William Mort. 2.40 to go here in the third quarter between these Palomar League rivals. The old-fashioned saying, even Steven tied at three here in the third. Behind the net. Here they go. You can definitely hear that wind picking up in the background. Behind the net, Doyle loses the handle on that one. Off a high pass from Bennett Schaefer. So the Falcons have been a little sloppy on offense the last couple of minutes. Yeah, really uncharacteristic out of their out of their offense. I mean, they're 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 old and uh, they've been here before, um, and you, you really expect a lot more out of uh, out of those players. Oh, nifty pass by Christensen to Jared Mafucci. Don't try that at home. Shot on the way, and the save is made by Katie. Yeah, oh, that was, that was, I think, too quick of a shot. Definitely too quick of a shot. Just got the ball over after a turnover by Torrey Pines. You would have liked to see LCC take a little uh, time off the clock there and get a good shot. Good ride. Good pick. Good hustle there by Galgan. And the fans are fired up. <laughs> I mean, it, seems like, it seems like there's a lot more LCC fans over there. Well, it's definitely a good crowd on hand. You got to say, what, at least 2,000 here? At least. Yeah. It's just like a college crowd out here. This is great. You had these kind of crowds at UMBC on a regular basis? Oh, yeah. You know, the big, the big uh, you know, Thursday, Friday night games against the Marylands and the Hopkins, you know, we usually, we usually got a pretty good uh, showing from our student fan base. Well, I think usually you got your biggest crowds when Hofstra came into town <laughs> because they are the pride. <laughs> the good old pride. <laughs> I still don't know why they changed their nickname from the Flying Dutchman, which I thought was one of the better nicknames in Division One. <laughs> it happened around the time they got their new basketball facility on campus back in the days of Speedy Claxton. There you go. That's a little known fact for you. I didn't know that at all. Yep. Uh huh. Well, I'm old enough to. I actually <laughs> lived through that darn thing. So. <laughs> yeah, well, how about that uh, that all Mar all Maryland championship game? There you go. That's pretty good too. I'm excited to get to get my eyes on that on Monday Memorial Day weekend. Loyola and Maryland. Uh, it'll be a really good showing by those two. Two um, really slow tempo ball clubs. So right now the tempo. In the favor of the Mavericks, who are trying to take the lead with 45 seconds to go here in quarter three. Fanning on the shot is Ben Key. And here comes Story Pines and William Mort. And that's a huge over the head check. I mean, that's it sure is. Play. I mean, if you miss that, I, Mort's running right into the fast break. Yeah. O'Brien looks like the athletic type. Even if he missed, he looked like he might be able to uh, recover into the hole there. Yep, O'Brien on the year, 20 goals, 12 assists, 32 points, 50 ground balls on the year. Just under 30 seconds to play here in quarter three of the 3-3 tie. Ziegler looking for magic, none to be found, and stripped of the ball. Great defense by the combination of Moore and Katie. We're down to 10 seconds. Green light. Oh, 
Lazy pass there. Missed opportunity there by Dustin Skousen. And that's going to wrap up quarter number three from Westview High, just outside of San Diego with your score. La Costa Canyon three and Palomar three. You're watching exclusive action of the boys' Division I lacrosse championships on the Lacrosse Network in conjunction with IBNSports.com. Coming across, finds Costanzo. Costanzo's coming around, takes a shot, and the goal! And that's going to do it. Costanzo does it himself. Comes around the corner, shoots top shelf, off stick. And Cal State Fullerton is going to the championship game. Fourth quarter action here on the Lacrosse Network in conjunction with IBNSports.com. Mark Keller along with Chris Marshall and Max Davis. Three all. We got 12 minutes left to decide who's going to win this one. It has been a defensive battle. The Torrey Pine Falcons, they have the ball. They lost twice to La Costa Canyon during the regular season. But even though it's tied, I think they have had the upper half in the overall flow of this game. It def definitely looked more confident on the, uh, on the offensive end. I mean, they've had, they've had more opportunities, but that's not uncommon of their matchups earlier in the season. Both teams have had great runs since 2005. Torrey Pines 127 and 43. La Costa Canyon 155 and 25. These teams are used to winning. I know, I know a couple of those teams were undefeated too for LCC. Oh yeah, they had that great season in 2005. They were 24 and 0, and in 2010, 23 and 0. Shot on the way, score! For Torrey Pines, it's Bennett Schaefer, and he gives the Falcons the lead with 10.46 to go here in the contest. It's another great overhand fundamental release there by Bennett. You know, the three-quarter arm bounce shot, an underutilized shot in today's lacrosse game. I'd like to see more of that. And for Schaefer, that's his 19th goal of the year, and it comes with 10.46 to go here in regulation. So for Torrey Pines, there have been three times that La Costa Canyon has tied it, and three times Torrey Pines has regained the lead. Let's see what the Mavericks can do as they win the faceoff. I just love the acronym of the FOGO, Faceoff Get Off. <laughs> One of the better terms in lacrosse. 
Looked like Torrey Pines was um, pressuring out there when, when the Fogo had the ball. But if you're LaCosta Canyon, you want to get a goal back quickly. And I'm still looking for the eruption of Cameron Ziegler. He's been awfully quiet tonight. Cameron wears number six. Reese has played well today. Looks to get inside. Shoots. Save made. Now let's talk about the fact that there was one infraction called against each team. Why did the Mavericks keep possession? Not really sure about that one. Um, yeah, I mean, it seemed like seemed like I, I get the uh, the crease call, but the delay of game is one I haven't really seen before. <laughs> you got Chris anything? <laughs> I mean, I have some thoughts. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's. It's it's a tough call. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty ticky tack to get a to get a push call that cr that close to the crease. Hester off to Ziegler. Let's see what the Mavericks can do with an extra possession here. Loy to Ziegler, back behind the cage to Galgan. Ball to Tory Pines. Looks like it might have been a moving pick there. Falcons up by one and they have possession. 9.13 to go here in quarter four. Yamamoto, you've got to be thinking if you're Tory and you come away with a goal here, boy, you're in the driver's seat. Doyle to Gradinger. Let's see what Lucas can do here. Right back to Doyle. That's a pretty good idea. I'd like to see Tory Pines get the ball on Doyle's stick here and see if he can create some offense for him. Here comes Perkins. Perkins. Behind the net to Doyle. Doyle to Zion. Zion looking to operate. Nothing doing. Kicks back up top. Yamamoto. Right side Perkins. Showing some good patience. You're in no rush. You have the lead and you have the ball. You're exactly where you want to be. Yeah, and this definitely gives their defense an opportunity to rest some. Yep. We've, we've got another question here from 90's, uh, 90 Days Rich on what the uh, overtime rules are. And it's uh, overtime periods until until somebody wins. Sudden death. That's the way to play it. I believe they're uh, eight-minute eight, eight minute quarters. I could be wrong, but, yeah, as you said, five-minute. Yeah, they're, they're five-minute. But as, as you mentioned there, we're playing until we get a goal. Doyle, he gets stripped of it. Good defense there by the Mavericks, and the veteran goalkeeper, Cooper, comes away with it. Ooh. However, Aaron passes as he attempts to try to set up Hester. Who comes away with it? Once again, it's Torrey winning the battle Here's of the ground ball balls. There. Great job done by Trenton Katie. Got possession. It looks like he is holding his right arm. I'm not sure if he might have got hit on that funny bone, and of course there's nothing funny about that. <laughs> I don't know who came up with that one. Yamamoto for Torrey. 7-18 to go here in the fourth, and the uh, Falcons clinging to a one-goal lead. Perkins. I mean, you really see the patience in this in this veteran squad. I mean, they, they they go into their offense no matter no matter what what position they're in in the game, whether they're down one, up one, or the game's tied. That's the way you should play it. Yamamoto to Perkins, straightaway shot, score! Oh, he bounced that one in, and with 6:50 to go, the Falcons take a two-goal lead. Yeah, and the Tory fans erupt after that one. It was from a solid 15 yards out. And for Andrew Perkins, that is his 35th goal of the season, and it couldn't come at a better time for Falcon fans. So right now, all the momentum with Tory Pines. Absolutely. And it uh, looks like we've got another comment here, this one from Chris Gone one uh, And uh, it's FYI that Gone is pronounced Gone, and he's headed to Michigan next year to play. So... Thanks for that. I re re really appreciate you watching and uh, and your help on that. And right now, Brendan and the Mavericks not gone, but close to it, down by two goals with six and a half minutes to go here in the fourth. 
Right now, Torrey with possession and that two-goal lead. Yamamoto in trouble along the sideline and wisely calls timeout. 6.21 to go here in the fourth. It's Torrey 5, La Costa Canyon 3. Chris, you were saying the toughest thing to do in sports, beat someone three times in a year. The Mavericks did it the first two times, but maybe they're not doing it the last time when it matters most. Yeah, and I mean, that's a real heads-up heads up call from the Torrey sideline. I mean, it looked like they kind of left uh, Yamamoto out to dry on that on that sub, uh, got got the double close to the triple team there and able to get that timeout before uh, before he lost the ball. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's a real heads-up call. Well, you you know, that's the third time that Torrey has done that today, where it looked like they were about to go out of bounds and had the wherewithal to call timeout. Yeah, well, I mean, you don't get to take them home with you, so <laughs> if you have the opportunity, you should absolutely use them. We should also mention coming up next will be the Division Two finals between the two top-ranked teams in Division Two in San Diego County, between uh, the Bishop School and Coronado, and uh, that one, I think, has the makings of a close contest as well. Yeah, and a, and a bunch of uh, a bunch of D1 recruits in in that one as well. I know uh, there's a couple guys, uh, a, a Duke guy, a Notre Dame guy on Bishops, uh, as well as an Air Force guy and a Dominican guy for uh, for Coronado. So I mean, there's there's no shortage of talent in the second game either. Yep, and we should mention uh, a week ago, uh, both the La Costa Canyon and Coronado girls were winners. Can we see a repeat in the boys' division? Well, we certainly have a shot of being halfway there, possibly, with 6.21 to go here in the fourth. Torrey with a two-goal lead at possession of the ball. So here we go. Zion. Cradling that ball. Also, the advantage I think the boys have over the girls is they got the deeper pockets on those lacrosse sticks can really generate a lot of power. Mavericks not happy with that call, but yeah, I mean that's, that's that's really fortunate. I mean Zion looked like he was forcing that. I mean really uncharacteristic from what we've seen so far uh, out, out, out of them, and really uh, really lucked out that he got that trip call. Yeah, well sometimes you know when you're playing in. Uh, the game's uh, brightest lights, sometimes you do things that may be uncharacteristic. But give these two teams credit. They have done everything they needed to do to get here today. Question is, who can finish who off? Shot on the way. It will go wide by Zach Zion. And the Falcons will keep possession with 5.39 to go here in quarter four. Now, Max, I see it uh, looks like you're getting cold, but you're a back east guy. What's going on, man? Yeah, you know, I think moving out here to the west has thinned my blood a little bit. It happens. <laughs> yeah, the hands are feeling a little chilly now, but you now we'll work through it. Okay. <laughs> Nothing we can't hand handle, right? Perkins, he swings left side, Gradinger. Shot, yeah. score! It's a great goal. 5-21 to go, now 6-3. to three. And for Gradinger, that is his second goal of the night. His 35th of the year, and it may not be over till the fat lady sings, but she's starting to hum in my headset. That's great recognition by Granger there to see that the slide was a little late and to pull that face dodge again underneath his defenseman. Wow. And I mean, it, it, it's it's a lot like a PK when you're in that close in, in soccer. I mean, you, you got to guess right, otherwise you're not going to save it. So since La Costa Canyon was able to end the third tied at three, it's been goals in the fourth for Torrey at 1046, 650, and 521 to take a 6 3 lead. We have a timeout. We also have a flag flying as that timeout was called. Apparently going to go against Torrey Pines. Yeah, it looked like a late check there by uh, Katie. That's exactly what it is. And being up 6 3, that was a mental mistake right there. You have all the momentum going your way. The last thing you want to do is give the Mavericks reason for hope. I mean that's 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 a really good point. I mean if they uh, they, they have all the momentum in the world, I mean they've they've rattled off uh, three straight goals, four, and uh, if they were to put another one in, I mean you can just tell by the by, by the sideline presence that both these teams have. I mean they're a lot more fired up, and that's 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 a real mental mistake. You take a look. We mentioned a year ago, Torrey Pines were CIF champs when they defeated Poway ten to seven. You go back to 2010, they were 17 and three. And lost in CIF to La Costa Canyon 12-6 in 2009. They got knocked out in the quarters by La Costa Canyon. 
uh, by the count of 14 to 4. So, uh, you know, if you're Tory Pines, I mean, you're really hanging your hat on what looks like a pretty good victory opportunity with 5 12 to go. As long as you don't keep making mistakes like we just saw moments ago, they're definitely in the driver's seat. Yeah, this is a huge man down possession here for Torrey Pines. If they can kill this penalty and get the ball back, they'll have that momentum right back on their side, and they'll be in a really good position to uh, close this game out with a W. Yep, to me, one of the keys is that Cameron Ziegler has been held goalless in this game. But like you mentioned earlier, he had uh, he had three goals in a little over a minute uh, in the semi, so this game is far from over, especially if they get a goal here. Let's see what they could do. Coming out of the timeout. And the man up opportunity. Good check. Yep, good check off the shot attempt by Lacosta Canyon's gone. And now here comes Tory. Here come the Falcons with the lead and the momentum and everything on their side. Oh, Until that bad Aaron pass out of bounds will give Mavericks possession with 4.37 to go. Yeah, and that's and that's that's Chris Carter. You don't expect to see stuff like that out of him heading to Notre Dame. Here comes Reese. He's got some room to roam. Behind the net to Ziegler. Let's see if they can find someone open. Shot on the way, score! Gone with his 37th of the year, his first of the night. Six for your score with 4.13 to go. It's another great location shot by Gone there. Overhand, high to low to the far corner. Really tough for Goy to make a save there. You see, I think he just needed a little mojo his way by getting a family member uh, telling us his correct pronunciation. <laughs> he puts one in between yeah, the pipes, and it's a two-goal game. Let's see who can win this faceoff. It's the Mavericks coming away with it. Reese shoots, scores! Oh my! Two goals within six seconds. Six to five is your score. Two goals in six seconds. An amazing turnaround in this match. Amazing indeed. It's a brand new ball game now. Now there's no humming in my headset. <laughs> it's gone. I mean, that's that's why they play the games. Yep. I mean, that's exciting lacrosse. I wouldn't expect anything less from these two teams. Now you're hearing the chants of LCC from the crowd. Big ground ball here. Is oh, this is huge. It. And coming away with it are the Mavericks. Or are they? Reese had it, lost it. Who wants to corral it? Finally picked up by Reese. And the Mavericks with a chance to tie. Oh, my. No timeout call here by the LCC coaching staff. I, I, I would not call timeout. Right now, momentum's on your side. You want to take advantage and try and ride that wave. And it almost looked like Reese tried to call that himself. Exactly. O'Brien. You see LCC trying to get the uh, the mismatch coming through coming through the center, see if they can get a little separation there, but a, but a great hustle play. Off to Loy. Loy to Ziegler behind the cage. O'Brien. He's been quiet tonight. Off to Loy. Loy back to Ziegler. Shot on the way, and the save is made. It's a great look inside. Couldn't get enough power on the shot, though. Exactly. That was definitely a soft shot opportunity by Ben Keene. Ben has played well tonight. Within one goal at 6-5 with 2.42 to go in this one. Some kind of comeback by the Mavericks. Huh? It looked like they were down and out. Yeah, got some new life now. Two goals within six seconds. I don't know what the all-time record is, but that's got to be awfully close. Gradinger to Yamamoto. 2.16 to go in this match between these two Palomar League rivals. And, I mean, Torrey's going to have to keep the ball in the, uh, in the box here in, uh, in seven seconds, so definitely something to think about. Oh, pass almost picked up. Sure. Gradinger to Doyle. 
Sean operating one-on-one -on -one against Kyle Mumau. Loose ball scramble. Gradinger comes away with it. We're down to 148 here in the fourth. Doyle. Let's see what Sean can do right here. Nice little weave there off to Andrew Perkins. Back to Doyle. Doyle. Interesting pass there, but they're able to keep possession. Loving the confidence from Doyle right there. You know, making a smart pass over the cage. Not a lot of players would have had the guts to toss that under a minute or under two minutes. Perkins. And you see, you see uh, LCC going into the double, which they absolutely have to do. Yep, Schaefer. Back over to Perkins. Perkins shoots. Goes just wide. Just shy of the net. Oh, they say it's a goal. With 1.06 to go, I'm not sure if Schaefer is going to get credit on that one. Well, I mean, that's, that's just a real heads up, heads up play by Perkins. Uh, I mean, he's got, the, he's got the open net. He's able to turn the corner, and he just barely sneaks that one by uh, four white shirts. And, you know, this is a real similar play to what, uh, what we saw this last week in South Carolina between uh, Minnesota Duluth and Cal Poly, the number 116 seed uh, setup, where Duluth had the opportunity to shoot on the empty net and opted not to and ended up losing the game in overtime. So, I mean, if you have the opportunity to go up two goals with a minute left, you absolutely have to take it. And they give the goal to Perkins, his 36th of the year. 7-5 is your score with 106 remaining. They haven't put that goal up on the scoreboard yet, but it is 7-5. And the crowd just erupted. You couldn't really tell. It didn't look like it had snuck behind the net, but I guess just far enough to get through there. Yeah, it looked like the goalie made a great diving save there. It came really close. I, you know, I think what part of the problem was is it hit that side that side part of the cage yeah. right. and then popped out. Mm -hmm. But it definitely hit the, uh, hit the net. And apparently the officials thought it had uh, made it uh, past the goal line. So... Goal for Perkins. So now the Mavericks down to 50 seconds left. Boy, they need a goal. They need one now. Costly. Yep. Shot score! Whoa. Oh, Reese just put a whole lot of mustard on that. A little bit of relish, too. We're back to a one-goal game with 41.4 seconds to go. And that's, a, and that's a great play. I mean, they're trying to force that shot initially and then able to come up in one motion, get the ground ball, turn around and take the shot. Top, top G's. I mean, that's, that's a great play. And for Reese, that's his third goal of the night. Biggest face-off of the game coming up right here. Reese now with 11 goals on the season. Oh, you have to win this if you're La Costa Canyon. The Mavericks, who's going to come away with it? And the Mavericks do. And they call timeout with 33.2 seconds to go. Yeah, and it, it's really a good thing that uh, that Reese didn't get that timeout call that he wanted earlier because then they wouldn't have it. Yeah. How about the play of Reese here in the fourth, coming up with a pair of goals within four? Uh, four minutes of each other. His play has been huge. Not one of the normal huge goal scorers for the Mavericks, but his veteran leadership really coming through. I mean, you you, you can tell why you can tell why he's a captain. I mean, he's uh, he's one of those players that, that you know puts the team on his back though. Thirty-three point two seconds to go. Seven six your score. We mentioned the last time they played on May first, the Mavericks came away with an eight seven win in triple overtime. Once again, it's a one goal affair. And we should mention this venue at Westview High School, one of the newer schools in the San Diego area. Beautiful facility. Great place to watch a game as well as to broadcast. And we've got a great crowd. And right now this entire crowd, they are all standing on their feet. They are just loving what they've been witnessing here this evening. It's been a great game so far. Looks like we're going to have another great ending. That we will. The Mavericks will have possession with 33.2 seconds to go. Will the Falcons become the repeat champions, or do the Mavericks knock them off their perch and become champs again? I don't know. Call me selfish, but I wouldn't be upset if we saw some OT here today. <laughs> <laughs> O'Brien, the do-it-all midi with the ball. Yep. Zane, he gives way to Tom Reese. Reese, he has been the scoring star in the last few minutes of this one. I think it might be time for, uh, for Ziegler to get a look. 
Yep. Mumbo. Let's see. He's got it. Now behind the net. Oh. Shot on the way. Score! Yeah. Reese with his fourth goal of the game. 14 seconds to go here in the fourth. We're all tied at a touchdown apiece. It's seven all. You gotta credit the LCC coaching staff there, drawing up a really, really great play, setting their kids up to uh, be successful there. And, I mean, you go, you, you you go to you go to the hot hand, and and Reese has got it. He is on fire. Four goals, including three here in the fourth. Tom Reese, the senior and one of the captains on this club, hoping he just sent his team to the overtime stanza. I mean, if he can win this to himself, they can score a goal here. Who comes away with it? We're down to six seconds. This is going to get scooped up. I don't know if there's enough time to get a shot off. O'Brien with the shot attempt, and we are going to overtime. 7-7 seven, seven your score between Torrey Pines and La Costa Canyon to decide the Division I championship. You're watching exclusive action of the boys lacrosse Division I San Diego County championships on the lacrosse network in conjunction with IBNSports.com. It's overtime when we return. Coming across, finds Costanzo. Costanzo's coming around, takes a shot, and the goal! And that's gonna do it, Costanzo does it himself. Comes around the corner, shoots top shelf, off stick. And Cal State Fullerton is going to the championship game. Uh, here we go, overtime, four-minute overtime stanza between the two Palomar League top dogs, Torrey Pines and La Costa Canyon. Check this out, gentlemen. Only six goals were scored in the first three quarters. Eight were scored in the fourth, and three of the four were call scored by Tom Reese, who just had an amazing four-minute run for the Mavericks to bring them back from the jaws of defeat, perhaps, to victory. Quite a stat. Seems this looks like the teams are playing a lot more loose this half, you know? Can't hold anything back here in the championship. So here we go. La Costa in white, Tory and Cardinal in gold. Will it be the Falcons to repeat as champions? Or do the Mavericks get their third championship in the last five years? Let's find out what's gonna happen right here at Westview High. In San Diego, California, Mark Heller, Chris Marshall, Mad Max Davis, thanks for joining us. This has been a good one. It has lived up to billing. You know, going overtime hated, once again. I wouldn't have hated Trent Cady on the faceoff here just to keep him from going forward. And it's Torrey coming away with it. So the Falcons get first shot here in the OT. And timeout call by the Falcons. They want to talk things over. Do you agree with that timeout call to be able to set up your offense? Or in sudden death, would you just go for it? You know, with the, with the amount of offensive firepower that Torrey Pines has, I, I, I think it's absolutely the right call. I mean, they, if they can get into their set offense, they can definitely score goals. Yeah, I agree. I like the call in that situation, especially with the uh, long pole number seven, Trenton Katie with the ball. You know, you don't want to take any chances uh, getting the ball stripped on the sideline and uh, turning it over. So kind of break down the scoring here. A pair of goals uh, for Torrey Pines for Granger. A Doyle with a couple of goals. Then you got uh, Perkins with one. Actually, Perkins also with two. And Schaefer with one. So three players with two and one with one. Of course, we mentioned uh, the exploits of uh, Tom Reese. He has led the attack with four goals. Uh, Keen had a couple of goals to kind of get the offense going early on. And uh, Gon has won, and that kind of has broken down your scoring so far here. 3.50 to go in the overtime stanza. 
the winner, boy, they will be jubilant. And if you are the loser, I mean, you're going to be feel the effects of this one for a long time. But both teams, though, have played outstanding here today after defense dominating the first three quarters of play. All of a sudden, the offense caught on fire here in the fourth. So here come the Torrey Pine Falcons. It'll be Zion to get things going. He wears number five. Perkins. Right side of Schaefer. Schaefer. Behind the net to Doyle. Doyle to Zion. Zach. Moving right side, looking for an opening. Shot on the way. Save is made. Great save. That's what it's all about. Cooper coming up with the biggest save of his Whoa, young life. Great hit. Yep, and they're going to let him go. They call it a clean hit. Jeez, that's a huge play. Needed the ball back through Torrey Pines. He got in that with that play. Yeah, that will definitely make the all-time hits of the week right there. And, I mean, you, you see you see some bad hits, but that one is that clean. one is textbook. I mean, hands together, straight to the chest. Great hit. Can't make any complaints about that one. That's also why you keep your head up. Perkins, shot him away! Save me by Cooper! Jeez. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, but we're still playing ball. Another great save there. Love the release by Perkins. Overhand high to low. Just couldn't get it past the goalie. Yeah, I mean, Perkins has got a rip, too. Cooper calling out to his offense. Timeout called by the Mavericks. 2.38 to go here in overtime number one. Mark Heller, Mad Max Davis, Chris Marshall. And Max, since you played in so many uh, lacrosse games over the years, is there a game similar to this one that you played in your career that you remember? Oh, definitely. I mean, um, when, I, when I think about overtime, I uh, think back to a game my sophomore year against Maryland at home. Uh, you know, the game went into uh, triple overtime, I believe, and I was actually fortunate enough to uh, score the the game winner with like two seconds left on the clock. So, uh, you'd like you'd like to see one of these one of these teams score before we get to the triple overtime period, but you never know. And and talk about the elation and celebration that took place with your team after oh, that goal. Oh man, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like a um, scoring a goal in a, in a um, sudden in sudden victory situation. It just takes all the pressure off immediately. You I mean you go through you go through so much with the team during the course of the season, you know, from practice to uh wins and losses that when you're able to experience a win like that, especially in a championship game that we're witnessing now, you know, there's there aren't many feelings that can compare. You know, the Maryland Terrapins, of course, one of the outstanding lacrosse teams in America, so that must have been a, a quite a high point for the UMBC lacrosse program. Oh yeah, definitely uh, definitely in the top three uh, of the lifetime. So, Chris Marshall, as we've got 2.38 to go here in the OT, what do you look for offensively here from the Mavericks on this possession? I mean, you'd have to think they're going to uh, go back to back to Reese. I mean, he's he's been he's been Mr. Uh, Mr. Everyone uh, <laughs> to, to close out the game, and I mean, it's it's hard to take the ball out of his hand. But I mean, you you also have good players who uh, who haven't done a whole lot, like Ziegler. I mean, this could be his opportunity to uh, put his stamp on this game. And when you think that Reese only had eight goals all year coming into this match, has had come up with four here tonight, including third in the fourth quarter alone, you sometimes never know who the heroes will be. Here comes Loy. Loy, shot! Just goes wide, and the Mavericks will keep possession. 2.21 to go here in overtime number one. And it didn't look like Katie even ever saw that one. I know the sun is coming from that side, which seems to be why they're shooting a lot that way. And uh, it's got to be just about right in the line of sight of Katie. I mean, they'd be smart to continue shooting from that side. Well, let's see if they do just that, Chris Marshall. Ziegler. Doesn't have it, gives way to Loy. Loy, number four. He's another good offensive player who's been quiet here today. Off to Ziegler. Ziegler to Reese. You know he's going to let it fly. Shoots, and it gets deflected. Loose ball scramble. Who wants that ground ball? Coming away for it, and then getting tripped up is Torrey Pines, Kobe Emery. Yikes. I don't agree with that call from the official. Looks like the ball was in a stick. That should have been a um, at least a push of possession and technical foul, 30-second penalty. Well, obviously, they're letting them play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough to throw the flag in OT, but I mean, I think you got to on that one. Yeah. Oh, nice move by Emery. 
wheels his way past two Maverick defenders. Black. He's double teamed. Defense really picking up the pace. Off to Schaefer. Just under 90 seconds to go here in overtime number one. We'll just keep doing four minute overtime until someone wants to score and end this one. Perkins. Behind the net to Doyle. Doyle to Granger. Off to Bennett. Yeah, he sure did. Would have been from Deke. But I mean, he's got the angle and the sun. That's true, he does have the sun. Yamamoto. Tyler. Nothing doing. Off to Doyle. Doyle was looking to go one on one, but good D by O'Brien. Sets up his teammate, shoots! Outside, outside. And just why? Oh, beautiful opportunity there by Yamamoto! Couldn't put it past Cooper, and we're still playing with 49.2 seconds to go here in OT number one. Here comes O'Brien. O'Brien with room to roll. We're down to 37 seconds. Off to Lloyd. Let's see what Aaron will do right here. Down to 25 seconds. Here comes Loy, wheeling and oh, dealing. Wow. Shooting and scoring! The Mavericks are champions! The Mavericks are champions! Loy with 20.7 seconds to go in the overtime period gives LaCosta Canyon the victory. They have defeated Torrey Pines all three times this year and that's and that's crazy and you can see the fans just running onto the field and they're fired up they're just as fired up as the uh, as the players are and you see a lot of these beat tp uh, t-shirts that uh, that they had made and that's what they did wow. eight to seven they beat them by that count and triple overtime on may 1st and they duplicate the feet on the game's biggest stage 8-7, La Costa Canyon wins it, and with the victory, the Mavericks finish up the regular season with a record of 22-1, and and boy, I'll tell you what, the CIF championship flags just continue to fly at La Costa Canyon High. Oh my, they won it all back in 2010, 2008, now here in 2012, Chris Marshall, they seem to like those even number years. Yeah, I mean, they, they earned it today. I mean, just right, riding the uh, riding the back of Reese for the rest of that uh, the fourth quarter and into the overtime. And that's uh, it's it's pretty spectacular play. Max, you've been through some great games over the years. As far as on the high school level, where would you say this one stacks up? Oh, I'd, I'd put it right up there in the in the top of the list. I mean, I mean, it's the level of talent that these two teams showed and the and the uh, level of play that they played with the entire game. It's really admirable. So uh, congrats to the uh, to the LCC team and, and their fans for uh, making this a great game. So Aaron Loy nets the game winner, his 27th of the year. It comes with 20.7 seconds to play. And your final score, La Costa Canyon 8 and Torrey Pine 7. We mentioned the Mavericks finish up 22-1. and And the Falcons not too shabby at 17-5. and Gentlemen, let's get your final thoughts on the game before we wrap up. First Mad Max. I mean, I, I thought um, I thought both teams came out with uh, with a tremendous amount of energy. You know, they were both ready to play. They they both understood uh, what was at stake. Uh, I just think LCC made a few more plays down the stretch and, and were able to keep their focus for the uh, for the full length of the game, and uh, it turned out to be the difference. And Chris Marshall, your final thoughts on this one? Yeah, I mean, just just like what Max said. I mean, it's a game. It's a game of runs, and whoever goes on the last run usually wins. And that's that's what LCC did. They went on the went on the last run of the game, and uh, and re it really put uh, put the Falcons away. And when you consider that Tory was up six three with five twenty one to go in this game, and the Mavericks found a way to come back and then send it to the OT and pull off the win is a testament to both of these teams. Once again, your final score: La Costa Canyon eight and Tory Pine seven. For Chris Marshall and Max Davis, I'm Mark Keller saying so long from Westview High School. 
La Costa Canyon, they are your Division I champions. You've been watching the San Diego County Boys Division I Lacrosse Championships on the Lacrosse Network in conjunction with IBNSports.com. Until about 15 minutes from now when we bring you the Division II Finals, I'm Mark Heller saying so long and good night.